This week, Cutting Edge visits New Life Church in the Val. It is led by a young and charismatic man of God said to have strong ties with fugitive from justice pastor, Shepard Bushiri. People like needs, they package themselves very well. They target certain, you know, city type, young black people, educated. So they need to dress sharp. They need to be able to use social media, Instagram, Facebook, and post photos in front of cars, in front of houses that are not theirs, cars that are not theirs. They rent the car for a day just to go and post. It's not anointing oil that thing. The oil in Jimmy's day. So I'll go and buy some ingredient that will make it smell nice. You understand? So, and then I'll go to check us and buy olive oil. And then he will tell you during the service that if you have a problem, uh, apply the anointing oil. If you are looking for a job, apply uh, the anointing. If you are sick, you have HIV, you have cancer, apply anointing oil. Because there is a certain spirit that they are using there to destroy people's lives. I mean, you come there fine, doing amazing in your life, Two months down the line, I'm telling you, it doesn't even have to take you three months, two months only. Things just get messy. That's when now, when your life is messy, you go back to this guy, he tells you about money, then you get more in, more in, you're gonna end up giving more money, more money, more money, more money. You end up with nothing. They're gonna call offering seven times. I'll tell you why. First offering is Papa is on his way to church, you must offer. Second offering, Papa is not happy, you must offer third offering, he's going to speak a word today. You need to offer. Fourth offering, there's Papa's birthday coming. You need to offer. Fifth offering, Papa's mother, a spiritual mother, his birthday is coming up next month. You need to offer. You understand? It's just a line of stories. Tongue credit is verbally abusive. At least I didn't suffer the sexual part of it. Of the girls he takes advantage of in the name of God and in the name of I'm fixing your marriage by sleeping with them. But you in church, he calls you stupid, you're never good enough, you are dizzy. Uh, when I left the ushering department, my reason why was I'm tired of being called stupid. Botoso and his two co accused Zokiso Azito and Lusanda Zolani, are facing more than 90 sex-related and human trafficking charges. The shepherd Bushiri has handed himself over uh, to police. In recent weeks, prophets and so-called men of God have been hogging the headlines, and it hasn't been for their spiritual works. Have you ever sexually abused no. any congregant in your church? No. What would you like to say to these allegations? I would like to say to the community listening to me right now that all these sexual allegations that I hate. God bless everybody watching. Pastor Zondo from the Val has appeared at the CRL Commission, answering to a range of accusations befitting more of a sexual predator and a fraudster more than a man of God. In the Val, the spiritual brother to Bushiri, Dr. Miz Mzwake Tankredi, stands accused of running a cult and leading to the financial ruins of his congregants. Mzwake Tankredi is a relatively new, younger and slick suited up charismatic church leader. Among his many miracles, he boasts of bringing back the dead to life and curing HIV AIDS. <laughs> Axval University of Technology students Ashley and George 
joined Tancredi's church back in 2016. I had just passed through a certain season where, you know, I was, my life was a little bit messy and I needed God at that point in time. So they were still also in, in Valley University of Technology in the campus. They had the campus ministry. So a friend introduced me, said, look, there is something that is happening. Go to that church. Maybe your life can change. So when I got there, okay, I see everything is happening. People are talking about what's happening there. The man of God is trying to preach. He's saying some things there. Everything has sounded, it sounded like it was all right, you know? When you feel, when you come in for the first time, you hear something new, you feel like, okay, this is something new. Meaning God is in this place. You, you know, you, you, you get excited to go talk okay, maybe my life is going to change. I was introduced by a friend. He told me that he's a man of God. He can prophesy. He can tell you about your future. He can also guide you in your business. That time I was doing second year in Val University of Technology. So I was one person that I was very determined to start my own business. So when I got to New Life, by that time it was Fountain of Glory. It was based in Vanderbilt Park. I asked some guy there at church that how can I be close to a man of God so that he can be able to mentor me. When he inquired about getting closer to the man of God, this is what he was told. He told me that the only access to get to him is through money. You need to keep on giving money. They call it a seed in your life. So you have to keep on giving each and every Sunday so that he can be able to recognize you. By then I was funded by NSFAS. So that's when I came across some other guys that were doing Forex trading, and then they introduced me into Forex. I started to push, I started to push. Uh, six months down the line, I was a profitable Forex trader. And then first time when I gave a church, I gave 3,000. That's when he recognized me, and then some other people, they saw me by then. Watch is over his way. Only weeks after joining the church, Ashley was already taking money from his business and putting it into the church. 2016, me and my, my, my two brothers, we started um, a, a modeling agency. It was called Val Modeling. We, we were supposed to do a very big show on the 3rd of December. We had bought a lot of, we have did a lot of tickets. We also had planned to, to sell our beverages like alcohol because we're doing it in the school's uh, pub. Well, but I, that pub, the, the one that is in VUT. So we're gonna be doing it there. We had already got everything, the stages and all of that. We were told that we needed to lay, lay a seat so that our, this thing can go. Remember, we are told to lay a seat of the very same amount that we have gathered together to be able to sponsor the project. So we had to take the, all that money that was for the, for the show. See, here's the money for the show. It didn't happen. Business just like that. We couldn't be able to pay for anything. People came on that day. There was nothing going on. People were angry. We were left in debt. He falleth into the what? Fire! George claims to have parted with a small fortune in order to get close to and get mentoring from the man of God. Who is Moses? There was a time I wanted to talk to him. I wanted to tell him about my business that I want to start so that he can be able to, to mentor me. Another guy by the name of Payanda, he's a pastor there. He told me that I need to prepare 10,000 for one on one. I did prepare that 10,000 and then I went to the office for one on one, but I never got, got an opportunity to talk to him for one on one. He just told me, just put it under my feet and then it is done. And then I put it, and then I left. That's it. And then every Sunday, every Sunday and Wednesday at church, I'll come with 3,000, 5,000, 2,000. I'll just keep on giving. Until the other day, Sunday, he was with his wife in the office. He told me that now you are my son. That's what he told me. And then he told me that now you are my son. You are not like the other guys. You can have my numbers. And then anything that you do, you should come to me, whether it's business-wise or you need any advice. Uh, if, 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 if you're Why would you anyone you part with like his or heart and money so easily? Did they maybe think they were buying God's favor? So I will break in pieces what? Remember, number one, I'm in this place thinking that I'm in the place where God speaks. So whatever this guy says, it is from God. And on its own, even though you can know that this thing is just 
just it's just nonsense but you feel like this is what what god is saying you know he can this guy can come and tell you that god is saying that you need to make sure that by the end of this week we need 200,000 rent yeah. as time went on ashley and george say their splurging on the church was rewarded when they were co-opted into a special group in the church responsible for raising money the kingdom finances is the, the, the way they put it they selected most people that were giving out a lot of money remember we had been told that every sunday you need to make sure that you come back you come to church either with 15,000, 30,000 rents, or we need to make sure that the next week Sunday we are raising 500,000. You need to make sure that you have 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000. Then when they announce their church, the kingdom of finances are the people to lead. So if they say we are raising 500,000 or uh, 1 million rent, kingdom finances are the ones to go and say, I'll do 100,000 rent. So when we do that, somebody who just came to church, who's a suspect, who doesn't know what's happening, but he's maybe God has blessed him finan uh, financially, he will just go and say, you know, if people are giving 100,000, meaning I'm also going to give 100,000. So more people fall victims for that. It wasn't long until Ashley's finances were not enough for both his family and the church. Finances, I was drained from point zero to 100, where I couldn't even be able to take care of my own family. There were times I couldn't even be able to pay my rent, where I would spend three months. And in those three months, not because I don't have money, but whatever money that I get, I was told that it needs to come to God. I don't have rent, I don't have electricity. My daughter is three months old. My daughter is three months, I don't have money to pay for my rent. Landlord comes, switch off, they cut off my electricity. I come and tell him, I tell, I tell him that I have an issue like this. The only thing that you'll be told, it is well. Tomorrow you are called, make sure that Monday, Sunday, you organize a seat of 20,000 rents. I just told you my problems that I can't pay my rent. But now you're telling me that I need to organize 20,000 rents by Sunday. Do whatever it takes because this is what God wants you to do for your finances to open up. Okay, this is what God is saying. What am I going to do? I'll do whatever it takes to get money. There is power in you that you have not experienced yet. And that power is going to come out because of the pressure that you are currently going through right now. Very same year, I was used so much. I remember 2018, I bought the church, the van. I bought that van for 125,000 rands because he had been telling me that, no, you need to do something big, something that you've never done before. And this is what God wants you to do. What I love about the anointing oil, once it comes upon your head, it does not remove things that are not supposed to be removed. It scans your body. It scans your spirit and it identifies the yoke. As one of Papa's sons, one of George's duties was to ensure that there was always anointing oil in the church. It does not break the yoke with you. It removes it's funny, the yoke. I'm the one who used to buy anointing oil. The, the oil actually, it's not anointing oil, I think. The oil in Jimmy's day. So I'll go and buy some ingredient that will make it smell nice. You understand? So, and then I'll go to checkers and buy olive oil. So we're gonna mix them. After mixing them, we're just gonna be like eight of us, the leaders in the room. We're gonna be mixing it, mixing it, and then we have 50 milliliters and then the, 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 the 10 milliliter, those small bottles of oil. And then there are stickers. I'm the one who also went to do those stickers. They were reaching new life, miracle oil. They call it miracle oil. You, will, you won't even pray for it. We'll just do those anointing oils. We, put, we package them and then we calculate how many, how many we have. And then one anointing oil, the bigger one is, uh, is 500, and then the other one is 300. Those things, they don't work. And then he will tell you during the service that if you have a problem, uh, apply the anointing oil. If you are looking for a job, apply uh, the anointing. If you are sick, you have HIV, you have cancer, apply anointing oil. We have, yeah, or drink it. We have people that stop taking medication because of that olive oil. If this mystery is not well explained or done properly, they'll anoint you until you have bold yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Ms. Tancredi traveled to Botswana. This time, George and Ashley got the opportunity to travel with him. I thought it was all about soul winning when we went to Botswana, only to find out that soul winning was just a front. But Mzake wanted to make money out of that trip of Botswana because we had about almost five services in different like locations in Botswana. Uh, the purpose of Millionaire Club is to raise as many people as possible 
to become uh, financially free? Normally when you come to the service, they will write your names, uh, your phone numbers, your email and your address. And then they will tell you that they are just keeping a record of everyone who came to, to the church. He will preach, he will preach, he will preach. And then after they will announce after preaching that everyone who want to do one-on-one -on -one with the man of God, who want to see men of God for one-on-one, -on -one, who wants to buy anointing oil, who wants to buy his book, they should come to the front. Really extreme. Remember, it's not a business club. It's a George says business. this is when he learned that the man of God actually had no prophetic powers and that everything was an elaborate scheme ran by the man of God and his gatekeepers. Just, not to, just to add the cherry on top, yeah. share with Botswana what God has specifically put in your... When you do one-on-one -on -one there, what happens, you're supposed to pay 5,000 and above. And then we are talking about pullers. And then when you do 5,000 and above, obviously they, they, they are going to call you. And then you will tell Bayanda that my name is who, who, who. I want to do one-on-one -on -one with the man of God. I have this problem. Already you told Bayanda. The moment he goes inside, he's going to tell Mzwake that uh, there is this certain guy outside is doing one-on-one. -on -one. The problem is this and this and this. The moment you enter in the office, already the guy knows what's your problems. But when you're inside, your mind will be blocked. You won't even realize or notice that I just told the pastor. Remember, you are talking to the prophet who hears from God. The moment he gets there, you will say your problem is finances. You will just jump and say, yes, man of God, yes, man of God. already you are blocked. And then he will tell you that you need to do this and this and this and this. And then you will lay your seed there, which is your man, your 5,000. And then he will tell you that it is done. It became apparent to George that the trip to Botswana was about business more than religion. Every time after service, the only thing that is concerned about is finances, not the souls that we want. And thousands of people, they will come, but he doesn't care about that. He will be frustrated. The only thing that he will question is, how much did you guys make? How much did you sell? How many books did we sell? How many anointing oil did we sell? Why such num a little number of people came for one-on-one? -on -one? You guys will need to push. Call those people that you took their numbers. The following day, people, they will keep on calling. We have to, they have to convince, there were ladies that were doing that, three of them, they have to convince you to come for one-on-one. -on -one. You know, there were times when you're seated down, you're thinking about it, something is wrong here. Immediately when that thought comes into your mind, you would actually stand up and fight that thought, thinking that is the devil speaking. Can't it probably it was even God maybe saying something that you need to wake up because this place is draining you. You know, spiritually, you go to say, oh, you go to church on a Sunday. When you get home, you are, you are drained, like emotionally, spiritually, you are drained. He wasted my time. He lied to me about everything. Everything about him is fake. Mises is a fraud. Everything about him is fake. He lies about the dumbest things. The only thing he's smart with is just manipulating people using the, the Bible. That's it. That's what they do. And also to take from you. You understand? So everybody that walks into the church, be a millionaire and walk into the church. I've seen millionaires walking in there and they were brought close. Two months later, they suck you dry. Waldo from Limbobo had come to a point in his life when he felt he needed religion. And that's when he came to know of the New Life Church. I got into the church because um, I was looking for God. I wondered, I, I, my, my, my past is not really wow, if I should put it like that. And um, It wasn't long until the church took over his time and eventually the ability to make a living for himself. He had someone meet to his house every day, eight o'clock in the morning for four years. Like with everything that I used to do, it had to come to an end. But I'm self-employed. So everything had to come to a stop and I'd have to attend to Papa. You get what I'm saying? So it was difficult. I mean, I can tell you now, I never had 50 bucks from that guy. He never gave me 50 bucks. And I had to drop things that gave me an income because of the grace to serve what I call nonsense now. It's like your Uber girls, eight o'clock in the evening, it's a lady, not once, to a guest house. You Uber these people to a guest house. I don't care if you are HIV. 
I don't care if you have sugar diabetes. I don't care if you have cancer. I don't care if they said you are cursed. I don't care if they said you are not going to buy a car. I don't care if they said you are not going to get married. Oh, Once yes. I pray for you, oh, I'm yes. going to break that curse in the name. Close. He doesn't need what, what people. Show me one person. Bring them here today. People died there because they had to leave their ARVs. People die. How can you live with no ARVs when you know that you're HIV positive? Right. He made people leave the their spirit, medication. The guy is in talks to God and he, he heals you with his That's hand. nonsense. That's nonsense. Not even his hand, his, sh his uh, shadow. He'll tell you that I walk past you, my shoulder heals you. You see, that's just nonsense. Oh, Father, the general, the overseer of Fountain of Glory. Congregants general, at New Life Church say that they refer to Dr. Ms. Tancredi as Baba regardless of age or seniority. I want to thank you and bless God for your life. Today we want to wish you as your sons are If you go to him and greet him without bowing, ne? he gets very offended. With me, God offended so many times. And remember when Papa is angry, you go apologize with the seed. Do you understand? So you can be back in Papa's good books. That's how it works. I got there, everybody was calling him Papa. And for me, it was new. And I, I found myself calling him Papa. I, I, I can't even explain how it happened. Mm. Yeah, but I know that if you don't, he gets offended. You can't call him Pastor. You can, you're not even allowed to say Pastor. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Apostle Mizim Zwaket and Kredi. Apostle, I know he gave himself that title, but even that apostle title, it's not doing him good. This boy feels like he's on top, you know? He feels everybody should just worship him. No. Like other victims of charismatic pastors, Waldo says that there is just something that affects your ability to tell the truth from lies and right from wrong when you're in the church. Healing and, and so on. Look, the truth is nobody will ever listen to you. See, there's, there's something that works upon you once you step in there. The Gabagunda spirit, that's what we call it. He likes playing on the pulpit with this word, so you need to be smart enough to capture it. There are some things in your life that will never happen unless you go through Transfigura. There's a spirit that will come upon you that blinds you from the outside world. You stop seeing things. And whatever the guy says, I call him a boy, I can't even say pastor or whatever, that small boy, whatever that small boy says, it's real in there. Say, I don't Amongst his biggest regrets about the time he spent at the church is the amount of money he parted ways with while he was there. So Peter here is talking and Peter, this is not your place to talk. Are you still there? Wave your hand if you're still hmm. there. Bruh. Hmm. But in that church, I can send you there when they say they're opening now. I can send you there. They're going to call offering seven times. I'll tell you why. First offering is Papa is on his way to church. You must offer. Second offering, Papa is not happy. You must offer. Third offering, he's going to speak a word today. You need to offer. Fourth offering, there's Papa's birthday coming. You need to offer. Fifth offering, Papa's mother, a spiritual mother, his birthday is coming up next month. You need to offer. You understand? It's just a line of stories. He's a person who is uh, an imposter and somebody who's posing as a, as a pastor, you know, uh, using the name of God to, to you know, uh, to get people to, to give him money. Bongani from the east of Joburg is a former leader at New Life who has subsequently left the church. He too says that church sucked him dry. So he's a liar, he's a manipulator. It was 2017 rand that I gave the seed. Um, for for the year and then also you then issue um prayer items for the year for each month to say in this month i would like to see this happen in this month i'd like to see this happen so each and every single member in the church did that came and gave um, you know that seed and then shortly after that uh, i was then called by the, his right hand man saying look um you know we we see that you are a person who is capable and you can make things happen so you know we want to also make our father happy so there's a camera that is that is needed for the church. Can you please assist with that? So, um, you know, the camera costs something like 10,000 rand. Um, and the guy is very sly, you know, even the way he approached me, 
he approached me as as if he's also a businessman and somebody who is well in, in you know well off and he said look well 10000 rand is nothing you know uh, and our father we honor him with more than that 500000 or whatever so you know um 10000 rand shouldn't be a problem you know so i then had to just come up with 10000 rand for the camera which i which i did um and then shortly after that um when i came to visit the church on a Sunday, he then called me into his office. The pastor called me into the, the office, and then he said to me, um, look, I have never asked this of anyone. I want you to honor my wife and give her a seed that, you know, you have never given before, you know. And I gave about 25K to his wife, you know, and this I gave some, some I had cash and some I had, you know, had I swiped using my card. Uh, and then shortly after that, the wife called me and I think two other guys to come to the office. And this is like a few weeks later. Um, and because it was the man of God's birthday that was coming in, in March, you know, and we were told to then give about 20K there uh, each for, for the birthday of man, just to honor the man, you know, and we, we actually did that. Um, and then later on, well, the following month, it's the wife's birthday. I think that's when then um, I started, you know, just pulling back and saying, no, this is just too much money that's just going out, you know. The church's demands for money from congregants were becoming more and more frequent and more and more absurd. The giving of money, the seeding, just didn't stop, you know. I mean, we needed to give money for this, for that, for everything, you know. At a later stage, um, him and his wife went to the UK to visit their spiritual father and then they send a message to us saying that they're not coming back and uh, if we want to honor them and we if we want to show that we appreciate them we need to do something that will provoke the anointing and let them to let them come back you know so then um the church started giving you know people started pledging and saying look i'll give this much and this is in one evening and we raised about ninety thousand rand to ninety thousand rand yes to give to, to him and his wife, just to honor them, to say, look, we honor you and we appreciate you just come back from the UK, you know? And that was just a gimmick and a, and a ploy to say they've spent money on their, you, you know, overseas trip. They just need money so that they, they, they remain stable coming back. Papa, talk to me. Papa, when this lady came in, she was not standing like this. Come on. They were getting here to come inside they the door. According to the former pastor and youth leader at New Life Church, there are no works of God wonders or miracles happening there. This is a big miracle, yet somebody is still sitting down and they are not celebrating. Everything was staged, you know, because when you come to church as somebody who does not know what happens in the background, you come there as an audience and you are shown, it's, a, it's literally a show. You know, you, are, you just see a show, you don't know what, what happens in the background. So all the healings were fabricated, um, all the prophecies were fabricated. Um, for example, you know, he would look at people's uh, Facebook pages to get information or he would send his, uh, people to go and get information on you so that by the time you come to church already, he, he knows something about you. And by the time you prophesize, you are in a state where you're thinking, how would how, how is it possible that he would know this about me? You know, meanwhile, you don't know how he went about to get the information, you know. So those are some of the gimmicks that were used uh, to get to people. So when I first arrived, I, was, I came as an audience also sitting on the other side, looking from outside, you know, seeing all of this happening and thinking, wow. You know, surely there is God here because it's something that you don't see in other churches. You don't see, you know, a man coming and laying hands on other people and immediately they stand up or they are healed or, you know, some of them he claims that they were HIV uh, free. Uh, meanwhile, they were still negative. Anointed water on him. They pick him up. Oh, Jesus, I'm speechless. Olifile is on his feet. Look at his yeah, face. Yeah, he is right now here. conscious, this young man is walking, walking back inside the church all by himself. Happy birthday, happy birthday to A founding member and former university buddy of Mzwake, accuses him of having faked an HIV healing in the church. My friend went to test in the church by the church congregants, right? 
uh, so you test before he, he heals you with his shadow and then after his shadow thing, you're gonna test the game to check if indeed the HIV is gone. I'm looking for my shadow to heal somebody right now. I saw my friend coming out after going back to test for the second time by the church members or church facilities. Um, and then she was crying that she was healed. She went back to her personal doctor. And when she got there, they tested her. And then the doctor was like, you, you still have it. If my man of God says that this is right, I don't go and check what the word says about what he just said is right. When the victim went to test, Gibotile says she was met with this response. Zwake so came to her and he was like, you have little faith. Your problem is little faith. And he took the ARVs and he said from today, stop it. You are healed. And she stopped them. And she had to sow a seed. You, you, you pay for everything. You buy the healing, you buy the deliverance, you buy the sermon, you buy everything. Yeah. You sow a seed to seal, seal the healing. Amen. Your son shall not die, but shall live. In a way, you are thanking God that he healed you. God did it for you. But he, he's God, I guess, because he told us that he's God and the wife is a prophet. One of the hallmarks of controversial pastors is that they always try to wedge a gap between congregants and their families. He isolates you from your family. When you go home, he tells you that you must come back. They call you, come back to church and uh, they'll tell you that you guys, when you go back home to maybe like I'm from Limpopo, that you go back home, you're going to come back with demons and we must deliver you again and again and again. And you're going to feel like, okay, I want to stay clean. So I must stay next to this anointing. And then he tells you that it's a covering. You guys need a covering. It's an umbrella. Like outside of this, you're going to be in danger. Like he creates codependency that you feel out of place when you're not at church. Gibot Dile went as far as changing the name her parents had given her because Papa said so. He started by praying for me and the prayer was, was odd because he's like, I separate you from any thing from your family, I separate you from the spirits from your family. Uh, we pray for deliverance and any, any. And I remember us bowing down ashamed that, oh my God, I was in this church for this long and I still have demons. Like, and then he said, I must stand up. And he asked Uwarona to take off my shoes. And then uh, he said, I must stand there. And then he said uh, to me that Jesus, I mean, the devil wanted your soul, but Jesus said, no. Okay, that's a deep one, you know? But then he didn't explain how the devil wanted my soul and what did he see or, or anything. But then at that moment, I didn't think through it all. And then he's like, um, from this day on, you shall be a gift to this church. You are a gift to this church and uh, you must go to home affairs, you change your name. So this is my real ID. Like these are the names my parents gave me. This is all the names I used throughout my primary, my high school, and my varsity. Right? This is Kibo Dila Raisive, Mohawasui. This is my true identity, which I took for granted. Right? And then this is me being mediocre and stupid. Uh, following the instruction of the stupid prophet, you know, Apostle. He, this is me being a gift to the church. <laughs> How do you feel? What, what, what kind of goes through your mind? You can see you're very emotional about it still. Like, how the hell did, did I come here? Like, it, it really shows where I was in life. 
my level of I don't know trust which was I can't even say trust my level of being gullible or broken rather tongue credit is verbally abusive at least I didn't suffer the sexual part of it of the girls he takes advantage of in the name of God and in the name of I'm fixing your marriage by sleeping with them but you in church he calls you stupid you're never good enough you are dizzy uh, when I left the ushering department my reason why was I'm tired of being called stupid like he would trash talk you you are nothing Despite numerous attempts by her family to rescue her, she remained at New Life Church. My sister came twice to try save me out of the cult, but I wasn't in for it because remember I was isolated and I felt like I didn't have a home. And then uh, the Cheryl Zondi case, the Omotoso case, really played a role because that girl like I I saw myself in her like even when people were like why didn't she leave the church even when Omotoso was doing that it was I felt like I want to go but I couldn't come out like something was holding me back but I really wanted out The Commission for the Promotion and the Protection of the Rights of Cultural, Religious and Linguistic Communities known as the CRL is a body established in terms of Chapter 9 of our country's constitution. Simply put, among some of their duties is to make space for people to practice their religion, cultures and languages. This is what they had to say about New Life Church. The CRL does not condemn the proliferation of churches or charismatic churches because its role is to protect and promote. The uh, CRL will only condemn the practices that violate the human dignity of our people or exploit them to the extent that they, it destroys their capacity to restore their human dignity. The CRL just heard about this uh, new church, new, new life revolution yesterday, and the team is trying to uh, locate where this church is so that we can get sufficient information um, about it. And we call on people to come to CRL or call CRL just to alert us about the existence of this church. Solomon Ashams is the director of Movement Against Abuse in Churches, they agitate against the abuse that happens in churches and through their YouTube channel, they expose fake pastors. He says South Africa is fertile ground for fake pastors. South Africa is very fertile because South Africa is not as old as this nation's when it comes to charismatic and, uh, you know, a Pentecostal denomination, you know. And also there is a problem of poverty in South Africa. But there is a bit of hopelessness. So these guys take hope and they package it in such a way they will tell you, no, come, and God is gonna solve all your problem. But God would not solve all your problem. Come, if you're sick, he would heal you. Some people are gonna die with diseases and sicknesses in their body. And that's not supposed to mean God is not God and he doesn't do miracles. No, it's just because that's the way that it is. So they package it, they study the South African mind and say, okay, what sort of hope do I put? Money, hope, relationships, hope, jobs, hope, success. You know, exactly what the South African lower class is trying to move to the middle class and hopefully the upper. Obviously you want to be like the Matsopes. The movement against abuse in churches have now become experts on the wave of charismatic pastors going through the country. Miss is a... Uh, it's a brand new charismatic Pentecostal pastor that we're gonna see. He's young. 
So they've learned from the older generation, them Bushiri, them Ubud Angel, who is his spiritual father, right? So these guys, they sit down, cook up miracles, and they're flamboyant and all that kind of stuff. And gradually they're bringing in forex business, investment stuff, and they brought it into the church. So they're bringing the corporate world into the church. People like Meads, they package themselves very well. They target certain, you know, city type, young black people, educated. So they need to dress sharp. They need to be able to use social media, Instagram, Facebook, and post photos in front of cars, in front of houses that are not theirs, cars that are not theirs. They rent the car for a day just to go and post and, and push all these things, you know, and talk about success because they know the young black South African in his 20s and 30s, success is money. How do I make money? So you have to show that you are made. But somebody like me, Tancredi, he uses your money to deceive you like he's a self-made guy. <laughs> Charismatic churches and their leaders across the world attract thousands of followers. Is there something intellectually wrong with, say, the follower of a Bushiri or a Tancredi? No matter how smart, you think you are when you step into the, the midst of somebody like miss and you allow your brain to accept just one thing he said that is the truth then you you're just going to be sucked in no matter how godly you think you are you know you're saying but why why are smart people why are people they go in there and and all of a sudden it's more like they're thinking it's suspended they don't think you know appropriately anymore one because people like mid tank ready and other Pentecostal charlatans, they actually have spiritual rituals that they do. So they have spiritual covenant. So they, hip, they have the power to hypnotize people. They look at you straight into your eye. Before you know it, you're not thinking, you're looking at them and boom. So there's a spiritual connotation to that. And then there is also the side of people where they come. Because you're smart doesn't, know, doesn't mean you know your Bible. <laughs> because you think you're godly, you go to church, doesn't mean you know your Bible. So you would see smart people, successful people, but they don't know their Bible. That's why they would sit in front of somebody like mates and you will play, play around with them, you know. And then you also have people who are a bit greedy. They see him as that picture of, that's where I want to be. Or what he says, that God will take you and make you a millionaire. All of us will become millionaires. That's a lie from the pit of hell. An ordained pastor himself, Solomon says that the fear of God has left many churches in this country. I think the state of the church currently right now is we are drifting more and more away from the fear of God. Uh, you know, we do not fear God. So we, and when you don't fear God, sin comes in easily. As a pastor, as an apostle, as a prophet, we don't fear God. We go to the pulpit, we say we fear God. We go out as Christians to our workplace and interact with others. We say we're Christians, we say we fear God. But behind the sin, there's no fear of God. I'm, a, I'm married with two kids. I tell people, if somebody comes to me with another woman and tell me, have sex with this woman, or I blow your brains, and he put a gun to my head, and I will tell him, please blow my brains. Because the fear of God for me would not let me you know, we can go and do business and cheat people. No fear of God. We can go to the pulpit and lie to pass to, to the congregation. No fear of God. You see, so the fear of God, because it's not there, gradually we are turning the church. Part of it is becoming like an entertainment center. It's becoming like showbiz. That's why you see people like Ubud Angel, Omoto Show, uh, Bushiri, Despite numerous attempts at bail, Omotoso remains in police custody in Port Elizabeth, accused of rape and human trafficking. It remains a matter of speculation how the money laundering accused man of God, Shepard Bushiri, avoided police detection while he was out on bail and managed to sneak into his country of birth, Malawi. Victims of crooked men of God, 
can have their faith in religion totally demolished. I don't care if you're cancer. I don't care if they said you are cursed. I don't care if they said you are not From a spiritual point of view, uh, I'm not uh, shaken or phased, you know, or should I say I'm not... Um, I can't say that I don't trust in God. I trust in God and I believe that there is a God. The only trust that is shaken is my trust in now pastors. Because there is a certain spirit that they are using there to destroy people's lives. I mean, you come there fine, doing amazing in your life. Two months down the line, I'm telling you, it doesn't even have to take you three months, two months only. Things just get messy. That's when now, when your life is messy, you go back to this guy, he tells you about money, then you get more into it, more into you're gonna end up giving more money, more money, more money, more money. You end up with nothing. I don't have one. Religion, I don't. Charismatic churches, I don't know. They are defiled. The gospel of prosperity, I don't believe in it. I believe there's one gospel and it's the gospel of Christ, not prosperity gospel. You don't make money out of Christ, will you work for it? So spiritually, look, if, if your faith, if you're a weak person, that boy will break you. But I, I think I'm just not only physically big, but my faith is big, bro. Like, he, he's not gonna take me down. I believe highly in God. I'm still that guy that, that sits in his room and prays. After weeks of not getting a response to an emailed request for an interview, we eventually managed to track down the Man of God's media spokesperson on the phone. Program on SABC One called Cutting Edge. Okay. Yes, yeah, sure. So I sent you a mail a while back and I've, I've called you and WhatsApped you. And uh, it was regarding um, a request to interview the Man of God about allegations made against him by former congregants of his. Yeah, boy. Uh, are, you aware, are, are you aware that the Lord is coming in existence? Before you can focus on allegations and stuff, you uh. have to make sure that you speak your things with Christ because the Lord is coming back to you. So what we need to preach now is to preach, tell people that the Lord is coming back. Okay. I take it you were saying to me that you're not going to be able to arrange the interview for me. Yeah. 